Hi, I'm Robert Coleman. I'm a Senior Applications Manager at Texas Instruments. Welcome to Power Tips. Welcome to Power Tip 58. If you really want to start a rousing discussion with some of your colleagues, you might ask them how they ground their power supply. There are several different approaches to the grounding of the power supply, and everybody has his own opinion about it. Most people have found a method that works for them, and they stick with it, and they swear by it, and they are afraid to, to change their approach. So which camp are you in? Many times people talk about single point grounds. And what they do with a single point ground is they establish w one reference point in the system and then they bring all currents in, into that node in separate conductors. And that's what I've tried to depict in this slide here. H here we have the input capacitor, transformer, MOSFET, current sense resistor loop, and there's a lot of high frequency current in here, and you see that the current really does not flow in the ground, it flows in the conductors between the various components and to this single point in the system. This provides a, a very low noise uh, ground that you'll have in your, in your power supply, but it also significantly increases some of the inductance in the power supply. For instance, you, uh, you could consider that you're having a connection from your uh, current sense resistor over to your control circuitry and that many times is a significant length and so what you've done here is you've put inductance in series with the source of the MOSFET and you've actually slowed the MOSFET switching down due to this inductance. A second approach that many people use is that they establish two kind of grounds within their system, an analog ground and a power ground and they make a single connection be between the two grounds. Um, this constrains the high frequency currents mostly in, in the power stage itself but it does still have the, the disadvantage is, is that there's a pretty significant amount of inductance hooking up between the two grounds and, and will slow the switching of the MOSFET down some. Or the third thing that you can do is you can just put down a single ground plane with this single ground plane, you, you have very low inductance in your system. Um, you have reduced the inductance of your conductors by putting them over the ground plane. And you don't have to do all the, the careful planning of a single point ground. It just reduces the inductance and uh, allows you to increase switching speeds in your power supply and, and reduce crosstalk also. And then finally the thing it does is it reduces some of the proximity effects in the conductors that control the high frequency conductor losses. So if you have the luxury of a multi-layer board, consider a ground plane, but if you're stuck with a single layer uh, PWB, you're probably stuck with one of the first two methods of grounding. So thank you for your attention. Look in Power Management Design Line and search on Power Tips if you'd like to see some more of these videos, or you can click on the link to all articles in the description section of this video. Thanks for your attention.